Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we are in Rogers, Arkansas where we are about to go to something really spectacular. I can't wait to share this with you. This has been on my bucket list for a while. Today we are at the Rogers Air Gun Museum, aka the Daisy Air Gun Museum. This is about to be absolutely epic and also is the home of one of the world's largest guns. In fact, as of 2021, this is the world's largest Daisy BB gun, and this was made possible by all of these amazing people. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at this stock. This is amazing. Just like the old BB guns of the past, this Daisy is true to form. It is absolutely awesome and has been at home since 1958 here in the Rogers area. Inside we go to see what else they have in store. Oh, now this is really cool. So there's a couple of different options here. So it's $2 admission and it's paid whenever we exit in the gift shop in a minute. They also have an audio tour and then they also have a QR code. So there's lots of different ways that you can experience this. Not to mention there is a self-guided tour book inside here also. Very cool. Now, which way do we want to do this? Um, the cell phone, while convenient, is not going to be i don't think as cool as doing one of these so let's get one of these wands and then it says here that we will select one of the audio wands and then we will look for the large number above the key displays and then we'll push the corresponding number on this little remote now if you are interested in picking up your own daisy you can do so here but we'll, we'll look at those when we go to the gift shop Now, of course, as we walk around, there's gonna be some cases like this, and it's a little harder to see into some of these cases because of the glare, but this is actually a mobile exhibit in the 1960s shipped to trade shows, and this would promote the Daisy Museum itself. Now, inside this, at the very bottom, there's a timeline of the history of the Daisy Manufacturing Company, and it goes everywhere from 1882, whenever it was first started, all the way down here to more present day in 2011. Now this is what the original Daisy Manufacturing Company looked like and you can see here the facilities continued to grow and grow and grow but you can see like the old facade and it's being propped up right here. It's very fascinating to see how the growth and the the change in time has modified the way that we see Daisy as a product. Now, as we come over to windmills to air guns right here, this is number two. So we'll push number two and it should start to play. Hamilton, a watchmaker and inventor by trade, moved from Ohio to Plymouth, Michigan. There he set up a shop in the front window of a local drugstore where he repaired watches. Soon thereafter, he designed and patented a metal veinless windmill and began production in a shop outside his home about 1880. In 1882, a group of Plymouth businessmen invested $30,000, purchased 25 acres of land in the heart of Plymouth, built a two-story, 8,000 square foot building, formed the Plymouth Iron Windmill Company, and began production of windmills. Oh yeah, this thing is awesome. The headset that they have, you just pull it up to your ear and then you can listen to what they're saying and it tells you the entirety of the story behind Daisy Manufacturing. And then also some of the things that historically led to it being called Daisy Manufacturing, which is really, really neat. And each one of those little pieces, those little nuggets is several minutes long. So you can get a pretty expansive knowledge through each one of the numbers that's pushed. So I'm gonna go ahead and go listen to some more of these and you guys have to come here as well. But I'll fill you in on some of the details as I pass throughout because there's some really cool displays. But we'll be here all day if I let you listen to them all too. So um, 
yeah, you have to come here to get that experience. But I really like the fact that they have so many different options for which you can take this tour. And it makes it extremely accessible. Whether you're a person who takes in knowledge from hearing it or physically reading it, they have something for you here at every stop, which is very nice. And here we have a couple of cases with some of the most important air rifles of that time. Not to mention one of Daisy's first advertising posters in this section right here. This is how it all started out. These guns right here. And something that's kind of interesting because I always love to find things that tie together. Did you know? According to this right here, Lewis and Clark actually, in some of their first adventures, were using air guns. That's right, they were using air guns. So here you can read a little bit more about how that they would navigate the Missouri using this particular style of air gun, which is fascinating, especially considering we stopped off at a lot of different Lewis and Clark stops. I didn't know that this was gonna be one as well. Another brain wrinkle to tie the whole picture together. Now, because I do wanna see what the entire experience would be like, we're gonna hover over this and you'll see it shows you that there's a little link that pops up, we click it, and then it immediately takes us to the Daisy Museum. And then it brings us to the number that we are at, which in this case is stop five. This has the full written text that you can also find in that self-guided tour. And this is what also is narrated over the other device that we have, which is pretty cool. So this is kind of a neat way to experience some of the history in a more visual way if you do need to read it. Not to mention, I like whenever they have QR codes because then I can have access to that information once again. I can just leave it open on a tab and then revisit it whenever I'm going back to like make sure that I retain all of that information. It's one of the ways that I like to learn. I like to reinforce the education that I have through a variety of different ways. And if I listen to it first and then I need to go and like, oh, I can't remember that one thing. I can go and go back to the mobile app and then there it is and then I'll remember it forever. Did you know that the first BB gun was actually called the Chicago? I think that's kind of an interesting thing and it pays reference to where it was originated from. Now there's some interesting stories behind the first marketing campaign and the discovery slash creation of the initial BB gun. In fact, a lot of times the man who was most popularizing the marketing side of it is credited with the founding of this particular style of gun. However, that is not the case. There was a different man who did that. And so here you can see all of the different models and you can see that the Chicago is up here and it looks like a very different BB gun that we're familiar with today. Let me get closer and show you. Now you can see here the Chicago actually is a wooden stock. Like the entire thing is wooden. And these were some of the earliest guns. This was in 1886 that they came up with the prototype. And in 1888 is the second model there that you can see that has a little bit of a modification to it, which is a little harder to see because of the way the case is displaying. But by 1888, they also made something called the Challenge, which was a different version of something very similar to the Chicago. And then as we can continue moving down, you see the 1888 Daisy was one of the first original models that were made and it looked very different than those top models. It's right here. The evolution of these guns continued on until the roaring 20s and as you can see by that time you were looking at something that looked much more like the more recent models. This was a military daisy with a bayonet that was actually sold between 1916 and 1932. And above that, the 1916 experimental model right here had a very industrial look to it. In fact, in the early 1900s, these became known as trick guns and they were used in a variety of different ways and became more of a commercial success as they were extremely available to all and they were marketed in catalogs and calendars even. They had marketing in the Sears and Roebuck at one point even. 
But it was here during the 20s that things started to change in way of the marketing. And they started to look at these as a toy item as well. In fact, you can see here some of the various campaigns that happened, including the Buck Rogers Liquid Helium water pistol that's right a water pistol then they also had this one right here which is something that looks like a space gun now at this point for the most part these guns were just here in the united states however in the 30s they decided to start shipping abroad and they decided that china was a great market for that so in the 30s they continued to expand their reach even further and found this great place that they could have so many interesting and unique designs and also sales and so that's kind of an interesting story that plays out on this wall in fact here at stop eight you learn that this is whenever this time began and you can see what kind of marketing that they would have used kind of unfolding in this paragraph right about here but i think that what's really interesting is not only did this happen in the 30s but also the commercial success was soaring here in the united states and more and more models were starting to be made available the advertising also took a turn and started to target children's comics and they created their own character and when i say they created their own character they actually capitalized on a character that was in existence but turned it into the official face of the red rider bb gun that's right mr red rider himself became the thing that people wanted to be kids looked to this character and wanted to be like their favorite cowboy they wanted to own the gun that their favorite cowboy had and because of that the toy market started going up up and up this was no longer a gun like lewis and clark had carried with them along the missouri to make sure that things were good this is no longer a trick rifle this is now something that is widely commercial and has turned into something that has no age and that is whenever it became very interesting for Daisy. In fact, marketing went up so much that there was a, a lot in store. You can see here photos and also advertisement that was going on at that time. You can even see here the official man who created the Red Rider himself. This is a letter from his uh, desk. This is his letterhead right here. And then as we continue going down, you can see these are definitely animated drawings which target children just as much as they do adults. But then when you get over here, you can see that they have fully embraced the childlike qualities of this particular thing and have paired up with Superman even. As we move to case number 10, we learn about the top guns, cork guns, water pistols, and toys. Guns had fully been embraced as a childlike thing that could create fun and intrigue and could create fictitious storylines to be played out with friends. And up in this corner up here, you can see there's even a little screen that shows you some of the unique things at that time, here we meet the Happy Daisy Boy as early as 1913 and continuing for almost 20 years. A young man named George Rockwell appeared in the advertisements for the Daisy BB guns. And here you can find some of those photos. Much like the rest of the world, when war happened, things changed. And even though they were a commercial success and they were building all of these amazing toy guns and then guns that could be used for other things, production had to halt. The equipment that they were using needed to be repurposed and also they needed to reduce the amount of metal that they were consuming. So instead of shutting down production altogether, they created a different style of toy gun. But more importantly, they, like many companies, started to make efforts toward helping with the war effort. They created BBs for testing equipment. And so that they could have plenty of these in stock, they turned their efforts entirely to doing this so that guns like this one right here could have test rounds. 
not only were these guns produced, but they were also marketed. And here you can see that they started to use marketing that even related to the wartime efforts. But not only that, there's a few other things that are kind of interesting in this particular case, including this flag right here. Each of the 22 stars on the banner represents individual Daisy employees who served in World War II. Perhaps one of the most famous Red Ryder BB guns that we have seen is in a Christmas story right here. It shows a little bit more about that. And that was actually an, a 1983 MGM produced movie. And this is where my first reference of this gun at least came from right here. In the storyline, they talked about wanting a Red Rider BB gun and all he wanted for Christmas was this Red Rider BB gun. And they just kept saying to him, you'll shoot your eye out. But it was based on the 1940s uh, BB gun of the time. And so it's kind of interesting to see how that plays into the bigger picture of the various models that have come both before and after that through all of these cases and there are so many unique models I had no idea and so coming into places like this is super cool even though I personally am not a huge gun person I feel like the history behind some of these things is just really incredible considering that they have been everything from a weapon to a toy and everything in between and then also how the marketing strategies have changed throughout the years and then also their contributions to the war effort super super neat So why are we seeing a daisy golf ball? And why are we seeing NASA? That's a good question. In fact, in this section right here, we learn why exactly there is a daisy golf ball on the physical actual moon. That's right. Daisy is such a popularized brand that there is a piece of daisy even on the moon. And that is because of one man, one man. In fact, right here, the story of Alan Bartlett. Alan Bartlett, Al Shepard Jr. to be specific. He was an astronaut and he actually took these golf balls up into space with him. And well, it's rumored that there's still one sitting there. Now, will we ever be able to see it? Probably not. However, this is very cool that there is this connection. And through yeah. this series of photos and autographs and notes, you can see the history unfold of Daisy making it all the way to space. But Daisy is also known as the gun of education and here you can find that they have a daisy shooting education program that started out as early as the early 40s it has of course expanded and now you can see this was the 50th annual daisy bb gun championship that was held right here in rogers and look at all of these competitors in fact throughout the years daisy's been associated with a lot of different interesting things we've seen superman we've seen the moon we've seen this championship for education we've seen the christmas story but that's just scraping the surface. There's so much more here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some more of the advertising and also some of the guns from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and then I'll catch you on the other side of this part of the display. Do you see this right here? That says Walt Disney on it. Did you know that Daisy was even affiliated with Walt Disney? I had no idea. And, and, and look at this guy right here, Zorro. Wow. In fact, right here is an actual production notes letter from Walt Disney, and it says facts about the Mickey Mouse Club program. So this was from the Mickey Mouse Club. And one of the things that they needed was to have some form of 
Daisy products in there. So this is what they created. They actually have a custom holster with a Mickey Mouse club on it. They have their own badge and then they have boots as well. The grandson of the official Buffalo Bill is seen here with a Daisy gun, but not just once several times. In fact, Daisy was associated with all of the who's who of the time. And as it continued to go through the Western era where there were so many unique, interesting faces and movies and TV shows, they were embranded with each and every one of them in such a real way. In fact, along this display right here, you will find a handful of very fascinating names that have been associated with the Daisy brand. Now, up until the 50s, they had not been located in this area. However, in the 50s, they actually made a move to Arkansas. Now, of course, by the time that we make it to the 80s, this would not be complete without a leg lamp and a little Ralphie over here. But also, did you know that during the 80s, there was a shift a little bit and you can see various styles of different kinds of guns in this particular section, like this one, which I have never seen in person, but looks really interesting. The barrel is attached to this hand grip stock and that actually twists it. That's different. But also they have some other things here like the Daisy Toys catalog. And then also some of the other more traditional looking guns throughout. I really love the fact that in this particular section, they do have a full Christmas story display, including the little Red Rider that they wanted so badly for Christmas. It says here, this is a Red Rider that is one of the few that was produced to be used for the movie itself. Wow. As we turn the corner, there is a pin map. And let's see, has someone already marked where I am from? It looks like they have. Now I just got another fun fact, which is super cool. This map right here and this map down here, they, they actually just told me they clear them out every January 1st and put up a new map. So all of the pins that you're seeing here are all from just this year. So someone from my area has been here just this year. That's insane. But um, there's a couple more things I wanna look at and then we're gonna move into the gift shop area and uh, pay the man because it's a $2 tour. <laughs> In this case, we see Daisy Today. This is stop number 28. And did you know that Daisy is actually in a contract currently with the government to produce drill rifles? That's right. In fact, the rifles that look like this right here. So that's a pretty neat little fun fact. But of course, as you come here, you need to read the rest and also listen to the tour because there's tons of really great information. But one of the most interesting thing that I found on this is the Daisy drill rifle can actually be purchased directly from the Daisy Air Gun Museum. So if you're interested in the past, you can find that here, but you can also find the present part of the Daisy journey. Okay, just like that, I have wrapped it up here at the Daisy Museum and I picked up some brochures for some future adventures that look really, really cool. Not to mention, I got a wonderful conversation here and I learned a few things about the area that I can't wait to share with you guys possibly in some future uploads. But as for now, what is it that they say in the Westerns? Happy trails. Until next time, guys, bye.